Shall we all stand, if, if you can, and let us garner and gain some encouragement and strength as we read and are called to worship from God's word. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself that where I am, you may be also. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us all, comforts us in all our afflictions, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. If we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. And if we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we suffer. Let's remain standing and join our hearts in singing Hymn number 293, Rise Up, O Church of God. Shall we pray in unison? O oh God, this morning we come into the stillness of your presence to begin this day with you, so that at this moment we may take with us a quiet serenity and strength to last us all day long. We have come to find wisdom, so we do not make foolish mistakes. We have come to find peace so that nothing would worry or upset us all through this day. We have come to find love, so that nothing would make us bitter, unforgiving, unkind. We have come to begin this day with you, continue it with you, and end it with you, so that we will have nothing at all to regret. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Father, we know these words that we have spoken you will honor if we as you would know our own hearts individually and our minds lord we confess our sins and we ask that you will bless us as we continue to allow you to guide us in all that we do and say 
each day that you give to us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated. We will have an Old Testament reading at this time that will go in hand in hand with the message that I will bring shortly. Good morning. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and return not thither but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and prosper in the thing for which I sent it. I will begin now to say that it's a joy for me to be here today. A little different experience, but I appreciate all the loving care and uh, guidance that I received from some of the folks here at the church. I'm not used to leading the entire service. And I've told everyone that I came in touch with since this morning early that uh, you're, I'm here because of the Gideons International having the state convention here in Erie this past week, this being the uh, first day of a new, new week here. But uh, it started Thursday, and, uh, of course, there's a convention uh, at different locations across the state. This year, it happened to be right here in uh, Erie. So that's why I'm here. I'm not here to, quote, give a, perhaps a message, but I hope that the, the time that uh, I do have here that it will be encouraging to you as I share with you what I have learned, what I have experienced, what I have seen, and this is dating myself some. For the past 30 plus years that I've been blessed to have been a part of the Gideons International, I'm here to first of all just say thank you for any prayers and any support that has come from individuals attending this church in the past. It means a lot. The Gideons have been in existence now for, I think, a little over 120 years. And uh, I've been a part of it from the very beginning. <laughs> well, some of you folks are paying attention. You aren't, you aren't asleep yet. But uh, no, um, I'm, I'm here today to, to, to mainly just share with you experiences and, and, and hearing of testimonies that, that I've been uh, so privileged to uh, have as, as I found myself involved with the Gideons. If it wouldn't be folks like yourself praying and giving uh, all these years, we would not be able to do what we have, what God has allowed us to accomplish. I just would like to challenge you with this thought here. As, as Christian people, as, as you partner with other organizations, just, just not the Gideons, there's other organizations that pretty much do the same thing. But let me challenge you with this statement. I, I came across this uh, a while back. Together we steward the only hope in the world today. And what is that hope? It's God's word. Never before, perhaps, have we been experiencing uh, life in this world as we see it. Uh, many things are happening so fast that we cannot even imagine uh, as we listen and watch the uh, news. If there's ever a time that people need that assurance that we just got done reading here in the service, a, a passage from, from, from John, that assurance 
comes from this book here. God's God's word. God's word says that it never changes and it never will change. And that's why we can put our assurance and our hope. Nothing else seems to last in this world, does it? Things that we think might last, things that we might want to put our hope and trust in are generally fleeting. And they go go away. But God's word is has been given to us for uh, eternity. Um, because folks like you have been praying and giving, I would just like to give you a perspective. As I joined back in 19, early 1980s, it was being said that every 15 days a million scriptures were being distributed around the world. And they are not the uh, complete Bible as I just held up there, but you've seen these before, little pocket testaments with Psalms and Proverbs. We find ourselves in 201, possibly 202 countries now, with over 100 different languages. And this is a form that we uh, uh, are able to send out with your help, with your gifts, with your prayers, by the millions. But it was being said that every 15 days a million scriptures were being distributed whenever I was joining I thought wow I can't wait to get started and I jumped right in I took my first opportunity to join other men and women Gideons along with their wives to go to Washington DC I hear a lot of news I guess news has always been coming out of Washington DC good or not so good <laughs> over the years but I found myself one day, the first day standing at the entrance the uh, main walking entrance of Georgetown University. I live, I told some folks, five hours away from here. God gave me a safe trip here this morning, and uh, hopefully I'm not going to fall asleep before I'm done speaking. <laughs> but I feel good now. But I found myself a country boy, uh, sort of like uh, not so much here, but, but out in the country. And there I was seeing different people from other countries walking in and out, off the, on the campus and off the campus. Uh, delivery trucks. I remember uh, uh, milk trucks and the pastry cake truck. There we were. We had the opportunity to, to give out freely if someone wanted one, God's word in the form of, of, of this. And I, I just, I, I was just over, overwhelmed. I was seeing folks from other countries for the first, first time. But it's because people were praying and, and giving back then. That's why we need continued support. Until COVID, through this whole world that we know it in, in disarray a few years ago, the Gideons were at the point where they were giving out a million of these because there was a need every four days. Uh, that's a lot of scriptures, folks. You would think that, well, that would, that would take care of the need. It wasn't even beginning to take care of the need. We will go to a, 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 a country or a continent, really, like India. What's the population of India? Over a billion with a B. That's a lot of people. When the Gideons go to one location with 500,000 of these in a particular language or di dialect, you might think that's a lot, but it really isn't as they're started to be pa passed out. There's a longing and, and there's a need for God's word. You, you might, might not think it in the, in, in, in the days that we live, but it, there, there is. We're getting to be back on track now. Uh, we aren't quite to where we were before, before COVID, but uh, we need continued prayer and support as we do that. With your prayers and your support, you allow the Gideons to be at, in, in France on a college campus, handing out a, probably a dark green cover. Same, same word inside that dark green. A young man came up, took this testament. He reached into his pocket and he pulled out a lighter. And you can guess what I'm gonna say happened next. He lit that testament on fire, threw it down in front of the Gideons and walked away. A few short moments later, with tears in his eyes, ironically, he came back to the same Gideon, and he asked for a testament. He said, I apologize. I don't know why I did that. I think he knew. 
we knew, but he had a change of mind up here. He said, I promise to take this, another one if you feel free to give me one and promise to read it. That's all we know of that young college student in France. He had a change of mind up here. Hopefully he had a change of heart down here as he, as he opens, opened God's precious word. Amen. And read that and made a decision that would make, uh, change his, his eternal uh, uh, life where he will be after uh, someday, whether we take our last breath here or not. Do you really believe that? That's part of the reason why I picked that uh, call to worship uh, reading. Do we really believe what that word is saying? God, is, God has a room for us. And I sometimes I get emotional, folks. Does that come with age? I'm sorry, but uh, on my way home from Maryland last evening, uh, I'm a deacon at my church, and uh, I got a phone call and a precious dear lady that comes to our church, 91 years old, still still drives to church, but I, I try and beat her there. She's an early bird. <laughs> and I, it, it gets me there to church in time, but I, I want to meet her, and I, I, I have her park in the drive drive through. I said, Frida, if you can make it, you just pull up to the uh, front door in the drive through and you can get out, and I'll park your car. And I've been doing that for years. But you know what? I think God has some uh, other plans. We uh, might not be seeing her. Perhaps we will. I'm not sure. So that's what's going through my mind, and that was after I picked that scripture that we read today. But we, we need that comfort. Frida is not doing very well, in the hospital right right now, many prayers are going up for her. But my days of waiting for her at the church might be over. But I'm going to see her sometime. That's the hope that we should have. I entitled my, quote, message here, which isn't a message, but I hope I can share with you some encouraging things. How many people love the hymn Amazing Grace? One of our favorites, right? Uh, I was out speaking for the Gideons up in northern PA that way. This is as far as we can go this time. I mean, I enjoy traveling, as, and I guess that's why I'm here, here, here before you today. I don't mind driving a long distance. But I was, we were singing Amazing Grace, and, you know, that's how we learn sometimes. It takes a lifetime. The third or fourth verse, one of the middle verses in Amazing Grace, it goes like this. His word... My hope secures. It's settled, folks. If we put our trust in this word, and, and, and we read from John, if we know that God's preparing a place for us, if we belong to him, we don't have to worry. Frida, Frida doesn't have to worry, even though she's in and out of unconsciousness. And, uh, you know, we know where we're going. And she made it, and I guess this is what startles, startled us last evening, that she made the statement, I don't want any help. God's going to take me home. So she doesn't want any help from the hospital and doctors, and it just sort of set, set me back because she just got a, another new used car. <laughs> and it, it, it was excited. She was excited about it, and uh, I, I was excited to see her, and she might have had it about three, three weeks. But you know what? That's minor because she's not going to be down, down here. Isn't it hard for us to, to let go here? But that's just, that's part of our human nature. But our spiritual nature, if, as we read God's word, his, his word, my hope secures. We're going to heaven, folks. Whether we think so or not, we can know, know so. Thanks, thanks to God and his word. Um, so uh, that's why I, I entitled it Amazing Grace. Uh, the other testimonies that I would, would like to share all of life-changing testimonies are because of God's grace. Amen? We don't earn our salvation, do we? We can't do enough good, can we? We can try, but we have to just put our trust in that living Savior who we just celebrated last week. Amen? Uh, in uh, Easter, that makes all the difference in this world for us because we know Jesus rose again uh, a long time ago. Um. I would like to share a testimony with you of a, that, that really be, uh, comes personal to me, and I would just like to challenge you with this. Um, how many people have a red Bible? Maybe red's not 
the one you like. Do you have a black Bible? It's okay. That's common. Uh, how about a white Bible? Uh, any other colors? If you're younger, you might go with green, green purple, something like that. But you know what? The best Bible I contend to you today is is a red Bible. If you don't have a red Bible, the, your Bible just isn't quite the quite up to par. Do you know what I'm Do you know what I'm getting at? It's not the color, but do you read it? A red Bible or EAV. I picked that up from another Gideon who inspired me to be in front of you today to be a Gideon speaker. I said, oh, I can't be a speaker. And you know where he's at now? He's in a nursing home, and he doesn't know where he's at. But that was one of his best lines. But it's true. The best Bible is a red Bible. This is a used hotel. Hotel Bible, and uh, um, we are supposed to go in and check. What do you think of whenever you go past a hotel, a motel somewhere? If you see a new one, oh, there's a new hotel. Oh, that's, that's nice. But if you're like me and the other Gideons, as you go past all the hotels and motels, I'm asking myself, is there a $5 Bible in every room? That's the challenge that we have, folks. That's part of the reason why I'm here today. What a challenge. Uh, I come from a, a county where, are, are you ready? We do have a drum set over there. Do we have a drum, drum roll? We have a total, are you ready for this? We have a total of 78 rooms in our county. <laughs> We're just a pass-through county between Harrisburg and Penn State. But a place like Erie, how many rooms are there in Erie? What a challenge the Gideons just not here in Erie have. <laughs> but your your church is, is helping the Gideons as you give and, and as you pray. And guess what? I, I guess I was so nervous about getting through the service today. We don't have any Gideon inserts. You're supposed to have a Gideon insert here. And, oh, that's, I just thought of that. Uh, I guess there's no, um, <laughs> might as well not take a whole lot of time talking about that. Yeah, I'm surprised that was overlooked. Every church service that we are having here today should have a bullet insert like this that you could be taking home. And I was going to say, take it home and keep it as a prayer reminder. And everything's in here that you need. The old Q QR code, if you want to give the Gideons a thousand dollars over your phone, you just scan that, right? <laughs> or if you want to do it the old-fashioned way, but do it quick because the postage is, is going up, right? You can tear off this en envelope, but you don't have it. But maybe they were dropped off and they. Okay, I'm, I'm going to follow up on that. I'm going to call Bob Bob Apple because Bob assigned me to this church. But, yeah, this picture here is worth 2,000 words. You know why, folks? It shows school children just overjoyed because they, knew, they know who the Gideons are. They know what the Gideons have for them for just a certain grades, five, four, five, and six or whatever. They can't wait till the Gideons come and give them one of these. This is probably one of the best things that they get for an entire year. It's hard for us to imagine that. But I, I've seen the same thing by, by uh, I've never gone on an overseas trip, but I've uh, been to banquets where guys have gone and they share their pictures and they share their testimonies. And it's the same thing over and over, but it never gets old <laughs> because people need the Lord. There's a song about that, right, Sonny? Yeah. People need the Lord. People need God's word. And, uh, but you know why it's worth another thousand words? The students take this home and read it to their parents in these poor countries because their parents can't read. You see how God, God works? It's just, it's just amazing. I'm going to follow up and I'm going to get you these and you can just pass them out. It, take them home, use them for a prayer reminder, drop that thousand dollar check in that envelope and mail it before postage goes up. Or I think it did already. I, I drove mail truck for 20 years that's why I'm bringing that up 60 cents now for fir first class or whatever where's it going to stop <laughs> Lord Lord, come quickly before the poaches goes up anymore but as, as, as we go and check to see if there's a Bible in a room we got a phone call years ago from Harrisburg and one of the camps there group said would you guys like to come down and help us check our rooms 
And I first thought, why are they asking us to drive 40 plus miles to help them? Well, I just shared with you that we only have only have 78 rooms. It's a big deal. One camp there has over 5,000 rooms. I realized real quick what chore they have to, to go in those 5,000 rooms twice a, twice, twice a year. Sometimes we don't find a Bible. Sometimes the Bibles are marked up, so we put a new one in or we put a uh, one that's uh, uh, not marked up and uh, more. But I found a note, and this is the actual note, folks. And uh, the interesting thing about this note is we just missed this man, young or old, I don't know. I'm going to read this to you. We just missed him by a few hours. We, we were there shortly about 1.30. Checkout time is what? 11, 12 at the latest. Let me read this note to you. How many people ever open up the Bible in hotels? Question mark. Me never. My name is Todd. And I'm fighting for my life. Wow. Here's a dollar donation to your church in, re in return for a prayer. Boy, I wish Todd would have taken that Bible. <laughs> it was there for the taking. And, and uh, each time we don't find a Bible, we, we just pray that, that people like this would take it. Some people are taking the Bibles out on purpose because they don't want the Bibles in there, if you know what I'm get, getting at. First of all, we kept that dollar, not for our church. Gideons aren't any one particular church. It's made up of people from various churches. But we did pray for him, and I've been praying for Todd ever since. You know, we, we, we tend to think that we have to help someone change. We can share God's word, but God does the changing of our hearts. Amen. I just pray that Todd got the help, found God's word somewhere, and that his life is right with the Lord so that he will spend eternity in uh, heaven sometime. But I just thought we just missed him. Um, I'd like to share a testimony now looking at the clock. This is a testimony that comes near and dear to, to my heart and uh, family, really. But there was a young man in Philadelphia. He wanted to uh, uh, work, him, work his, his uh, uh, way up through an, an insurance company, but he had, had to start out selling insurance. All right, and um, a, big, a big insurance firm out, outside of Philadelphia. Well, a, a, a big building, and uh, uh, there were quite a few different re receptionists there and, and, and whatever, girls and ladies working there too. And this one caught his, caught his attention, and he, and he thought he would like to get to know her. Well, long story short, okay, I'm cutting out a big portion here. She told him where they would go for their first date. Would anyone like to... Guess where they went on their first date? Church. church. He never went down the doors of a church before. But he thought, hey, if I want to have a chance with this girl, I better go to church, right? <laughs> he went to church with her one evening. There was an evangelist speaking there. And as the evangelist went through his message, he was sharing a portion of uh, God's God's word in uh, uh he, he didn't make any decisions, but the Holy Spirit, which we talked about as we read from God's Word, that's her comforter today. The Holy Spirit is her comforter. He wants to comfort us even though he might make us uncomfortable until we get our life right. Amen? <laughs> and that's what happened with this man. He was hearing God's Word. He knew what he had to do, but he didn't make any decisions for uh, Christ that night. But that the Holy Spirit kept bugging him, so to speak. That's my little term. As the days went by, as the weeks went by, he, he knew he had to get his life right with the Lord, but he wasn't doing it. But he, he didn't know where that passage of Scripture was. He wanted to make sure and find that passage of Scripture again. Follow this closely. This is all true, folks. <laughs> this is all true. One, one night as, or one day as they were, he and his buddies were done selling insurance, they would usually end up at a tavern or a bar or whatever. He said, you guys go ahead. I'm going back to the hotel room. And in his mind, on his mind, he wanted to go back and hopefully find a Bible in that hotel room. This is a God thing. Follow this. He went back to the hotel room. He opened that little dresser drawer or nightstand drawer, 
And there was a Bible there, number one, thanks to the Gideons, thanks to God making the Gideons, encouraging the Gideons to put a $5 Bible there. Number two, this is where it gets good. Of all the years that I've checked Bibles in the last 35 years, I've never seen an opened Bible in the drawer. That Bible was open as he pulled that drawer open. Number two. Number three, he looked down where the Bible was open. It, it, that, that didn't make any difference to him. He didn't know if it was the Old Testament, New Testament, or what. He looked down. Somebody else highlighted some scripture. And you can probably guess where I'm going, going with this. Is that number three? <laughs> he looked down at that highlighted scripture. Number four, bingo. The exact scripture that he was wanting to uh, um, uh, find. And my time is going, and I, I didn't come here to preach, because as Gideons, we aren't supposed to preach. But let me just read some of the verses in Philippians chapter 4, because my challenge to you is, is what we read uh, Four, five, six, and seven, and this is a familiar passage of scripture. Do we do what four, five, and six say? Do we rejoice in the Lord always? And again, I say rejoice. Do we let our moderation be known unto all men? The Lord is at hand. The Lord's coming. Number six, are uh, we careful for nothing? Now, I'm sorry, this is in the King James Version. Some of the words make us think, all right? Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests made unto God. God wants to comfort us by just allowing him to guide us. I put my trip in his hands as I came out here because I spent 14 hours on the road to Maryland yesterday, driving down to Maryland and driving back. So uh, I think these days are getting over between Saturday and making long trips to here. So uh, I just praise the Lord, Lord for a safe trip back. Now, what does verse 7 have? If we do 4, 5, and 6, what does God tell us that we will have? And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We've heard those verses before, but do we put them into practice? If we have Christ, he wants us to give us a lifestyle of rejoicing, moderation, and going to him in prayer. And then we will have that peace. As the days get tough for us, I go. My dear sister Frida, maybe she's passed on now. I uh, didn't get a phone call before the church, but she's better not not to be here. But she was still driving and she was zipping down the street before the church. I thought <laughs> that's just pretty uh, pretty good. But my challenge to you is: Do you have God's peace today? You can have it if you have Jesus Christ, as as we find it outlined in the, and, and I'm sure you've seen these before. How many people have received one of these in the service, in school? Can you remember receiving one in, in school, perhaps? Uh, I can tell you stories, and folks, I can go on and on, and I have to save enough time for us to finish the service, but I was up in uh, Berwick and Scranton. There's a lot of people concentrated in Bur Berwick and Scranton area in Pennsylvania, and uh, the second day of a Bible distribution um, of course, I didn't know where I was, and one of the uh, local Gideons said, I want you to stand right there on the public sidewalk, right beside the middle school, I guess it was. And I thought, mm, that's a little close. But I went there, and then he kept on going. So I'm standing there, and about 10 minutes before the, uh, the, the, the students were going to come out, here comes a young man, white shirt, tie, and I thought, okay, he's probably the principal. All right, sure enough, he was. He came to me, and he was rather cordial with me, decent, and uh, he said, I really wish you guys weren't here, but he didn't have any uh, ground to stand on. We were on public property, so uh, uh, he left, left and, and he said, would you mind moving up the sidewalk? So after he went across the street to my partner, uh, who, who had testaments, I maybe took two or three step, steps up, up the sidewalk. But what I'm about to share with you is, is this. Um, the students finally came, came out, and of course we have a little car cardboard box of one, 100 of, of these, and uh, usually the, the, the box is somewhere, so you have to bend down and pick up a handful. We have these come in five, bundles of five little paper bands. You break the paper band and you can pass them out, but then you have to bend it down, and, and, uh, and the kids don't wait. I mean, they begin, I thought, wait a minute, I'm missing two too many kids here. I've got to change, change my group. 
pay it off. I'm not planning. I'm definitely not. But that's just how it works. First time I ever did that. But why I'm sharing that with you, it's not because I but why I'm sharing that with you, it's not because I almost gave out a box. But you know what startled me, folks? Those most of those students, they didn't know what I was talking about. I wasn't saying New Testament because I knew they wouldn't know the word testament. We have a generation or more there that have been unchurched. I said, Would you like a pocket Bible? And I really don't even think they knew what the word Bible meant. Because they just gave me a blank stare. And maybe the first twenty or thirty didn't take any, but then once one takes, then the other ones take, right? That's why we read that scripture in the Old Testament passage. God's word will not return unto him void. All right? That's our Gideon theme verse in Isaiah chapter 55. So whatever we do to further the gospel, it's going to come back to God. Somehow, sometime. I thought, wow, are, are those students going to take those home and keep them, read them? or keep them, or throw them out. I've heard testimony after testimony where a younger or an older brother or sister will get one. They don't read it, but a younger brother or sister, years later, will read it, and their lives are changed. So we never know how God is going to work. And that's what makes it so e exciting for me. But getting back to this man here, I'm jumping uh, uh, testimonies here. This man... Eventually, after he read that scripture, he knew where the peace of God was. His life changed that night, uh, speeding the whole story up. He married that receptionist, and at first they were doing what they wanted to do. Then they both agreed that they better let ask God to uh, guide them in what he would like them to do. And you know what? Their lives were sort of deferred or deterred some, somewhere else, another direction for his uh, purpose. This is where it comes home to me. They were guided to go to a large retirement center outside of Philadelphia to be a man and wife chaplain team. And at that retirement center, there were uh, an older couple there, just so happened to be good friends with my dad and mother. <laughs> he passed away. Uh, the uh, 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 man in Philadelphia at the retirement center, my father passed away, but before my mother left the earth and went to heaven, I said, Mom, would you like to go down and see, was her name Joyce? I think it was Joyce. And I had the opportunity to ask Joyce, I said, Joyce, do you have so-and-so as a uh, chaplain there? Yes. She said, we can't be more happy here. We can't be more blessed. So they went from selling insurance, going to the tavern, to helping people as they grow older put their hope in, 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 in God's word. Amen? And uh, I, I, will, I will never forget that. Um, right across the page in my Bible, which is red, all right? Don't, don't, don't forget, the best Bible is a red, red Bible. Amen? Right across the page is Philippians 2.16. And this could almost be a charge as we leave the service here, but I have something else for the bulletin here. A, a lot of times I would, hold, I would hold up the Bible or hold up one of these. And verse 16 says, holding forth the word of life. And that's where I would stop. Yeah, hey, that, 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 that sounds good. Let's hold up God's word. But what does that really mean? Are we ashamed of God's word? Do we live by God's word? If we're going to hold it up, we better not be ashamed of it. Amen? If we're going to hold it up, let's stand on what it says and let's live, live by it, right? But that verse tells us why we should hold it up and live by it. And I wasn't referring to the whole verse. This is where our encouragement comes from. We're talking about hope, the hope of heaven. And it's not a, a hopeful hope that, well, I might get to heaven. It's a hope that's secure. Amen? And this verse tells us why. Let's hold forth forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Or how hard have, have we in our lifetime, have we been running for the Lord and laboring for the Lord's uh, work? Laboring and running. Are we doing a very good job? Um, that's what we're going to be rewarded on as we see Christ in heaven someday. Amen. So that verse there is really a charge for us 
to keep going forward as we as, as sang Rise Up, O Church of God, which this lady over here played very good. <laughs> it took me, Sonny, it took me six weeks in college, college, it took me six weeks to plunk out jingle bells <laughs> without the music. That goes way back. So you get, now I, I do play the trumpet. The Lord bless, bless me to be able to play, play the trumpet. In the time remaining, folks, I would just like to challenge you. How is this all, all, all done? I, I guess I alluded to it before. If, if I get you these, this is a starting point. But I also would like to challenge you. And, I only, uh, and of course, you can go on, on, online once you're home. Gideon's.org. Every, everything is there. Or use that Q, QR code. Which pocket do I have these in? How many people know that the Gideons have a Bible app? A lot of Bible apps are out there. I might be, I might be uh, just a little biased, but I think, and, and I'd be glad to, to give, give these out. Um, the Gideons have a Bible app now. It's basically, it has the entire Bible in or the entire Testament in from page to page, but it also has helps and things like that. The Gideons started this Bible app about three years ago. It's, it's free if you down, download it. How many people would like to read the Bible in over 1,500 languages or dialects. It's right here. It's a big old world out there, folks. There's a lot of people without God's Word, without knowing God's Word. And, but we have the dialects for those people. Testimonies of, of teachers. <laughs> teachers being able to use this Bible app on their phone that, and, and they'll pull up a dialect or language that they can share with the person that they might have the opportunity to share with. So I th don't think you're going to find another Bible app that has that many lang languages in. The uh, 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 possibilities are just endless. We are handing out just as many of these as we are these because it's more price, price effective. <laughs> these are less than a penny apiece where these are $1.15. How many people have gone through the drive through What's your favorite fast fast food joint? Is it Popeyes now? Popeyes are jam is starting to gain gain ground. I don't know. It's too spicy for me. I'm a Burger King and McDonald's guy. But ha have you ever looked down on the ground? How much change is dropped between the window and your car? Oh, oh uh, the change drops and you you know you can't get out and get it. There's enough change down there sometimes that will buy a whole testament like this. A dollar and fifteen cents. God's economy is unique. In a way that the more we of these we need, they get cheaper. Even though the cost of these are going up as far as the materials, cheaper. Whenever I joined back in 1980, these were a dollar forty, dollar and fifteen cents, folks, because we're giving out a million every every four four days. Uh, there's a need out there. That's why we need prayer and and support. So even change will make a big difference. Some sometimes. Um, so pray for us give as, as, as the Lord would lead you and uh, uh, here's what I'm after for my final plea uh, this is also on the internet you might not want to join anything else you might already be in enough organizations right but we do encourage people to jo men to join the Gideons uh, but if you'd like to be a friend of the Gideons you aren't attached you aren't you know there's no strings attached, but you're invited to, to take part in, in, in some circumstances. I only have two of these flyers, but like I say, you can s see the same thing on the in Internet. Consider becoming a friend of the Gideons. You can give and or just be a prayer partner. And uh, you know what? It's making a difference. <laughs> it's making a difference. Uh, it, it was just started not too long ago. And guess what country was the last one to jump on board with this? Our country. We were the last ones to jump on this idea of becoming a friend. Every other country was, uh, you know, people are, are jumping on and, and praying, and that's making a difference, and giving. So I'd, I'd love to give out two, two of these before the service is over. Did I share with you everything I wanted to say today? I don't know. I always leave and think, wow, what did they? Because I don't have notes, as you can tell. I'm just sort of jumping around. Uh, I'm, I'm not apologizing that I, I, I didn't come with a message uh, but 
we had to be careful of crossing the lines. Uh, and I guess I'm apologizing for myself. I told everyone else here, I'm, I'm not really a confirmed lay speaker. And that's what made me uh, a little bit nervous going through the service. But I enjoy just talking about what God has done for me back in 1972. As I was growing up as a good kid, my parents took us to church. But I didn't know Jesus until my junior year in, in school. My brother came home from Vietnam. And uh, he came back safely. And he shared with us the most important thing because he was scared. He said, the most important thing is to know Jesus. Guess what? He uh, pretty much scared a few of us in taking Jesus seriously. Uh, and we gave our lives to Christ. So uh, Jesus has, has been uh, uh, a difference in, in my life since 1972. Uh, don't put off sharing the, uh, the gospel and keep praying for us. Okay. Uh, Congregational sharing of joys and concerns. And I guess I sort of shared with you what some of mine already. I had a safe trip here. <laughs> I was concerned about that last last evening. Would anyone have any joys in, in, in Perkins? And you, you know who's back there in the back with the mic microphone? Turn this on. Uh, anyways, Sandy and I, we, we were down in uh, State College, so we went down there on, for Easter Sunday to be with Carrie. Alan and Allison, the kids were down there too. And when we were coming back on Monday, we were coming through uh, <clears throat> Clearfield, and it was starting to get a little bit bad. But as we got closer to Dubois, which is naturally higher uh, elevation, and people in this congregation travel I-80, well, the traffic came to a stop because there was, there was some wrecks up above. So I'm in the left-hand lane. There's semis over here in the right-hand lane. And for some reason, I just wanted to veer out just a titch and see what was going on above. I could see flashing lights. I says, oh, it must have been an accident. I look at my driver's side rear view mirror on the door, and here's an 18-wheeler, the biggest semi I've ever seen, come barreling down on the outside of me on the left lane. And I don't know how he hung on this, uh, uh, hung on the berm between the berm and the road, but you want to talk about your life flashing before your eyes. I, told, I, I moved that car in about two feet, or otherwise this week here there would have been two funerals because this semi would have just tossed us like a, like, a, like a toy. Yeah. But it was amazing to ever see that. And now when you see on the, the news that, you know, how a semi will just run in the back of a whole bunch of cars and just flatten them, well, this guy had enough room where he could get over and just hang on that left side. So I said to her, if the Lord wasn't with us that day, Nobody was. And it Amen. was a miracle how he came in. He swerved back in. He had enough room to get back in before he hit that bridge up above. So he was going way too fast, came over the crest of a hill. Yeah. Everybody was stopped. And thank God there was just enough room for him to get by on that left-hand side. But you want to talk about having the bejeebers scared out of you? <laughs> oh, yes, we did. It, so like you say, it's just boom, and it's. Oh, it was, just, it was y y your life flashed before your eyes. And because. I don't know why I did it, but I just happened to look in that uh, that driver's rearview mirror, and 40 feet, you know, behind was a semi rolling down, which you never would have ever thought of. So, thank you, that thank was you. An Anything experience. else? Joys and concerns. Any prayer, prayer requests for others here in the community? I have a joy. Uh, I see Matthews joined us. Thank you. Okay, I don't know Matthew, but I, I'm guessing I heat ready. Matthew, good to see you. I'll talk to you later if, if you want to talk to me. <laughs> Who? Okay, we need doctors. Thank you. Matthew, that's a challenge. Yeah, may the, may the Lord guide you. Um, anyone else? Anything? This is what brings the church together, doesn't it? Just joys and concerns. As, uh, anything else? Uh, let's bow, bow our heads with a word of uh, 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 prayer, and we'll close in the Lord's Prayer as you're accustomed to here. <clears throat> shall, we, shall we pray? Father, we do thank you for this day of life that you've given to us. Lord, in that, in that uh, uh, prayer and, and, and call to worship uh, that we had 
that we said that we wanted to begin the day with you and end the day, this day, with you. Lord, that might not happen. But we place our lives in your hand because we've given our lives to your precious uh, son, Jesus Christ, who lives today in the Holy Spirit, is, is guiding us, uh, that you promised us, the comforter is with us today. Lord, we have so much to be thankful for. May we be that witness that you would want us to be, Lord, uh, no matter where it might be. May we be ready. May we be ready to take the challenge. And, uh, Lord, as we've just heard about this experience, uh, Lord, we, we, we don't know what m- might happen and can happen to us in an instant. But, Lord, if we know that we have our lives right with you, we know it doesn't really matter. Lord, I just pray, if I may, for uh, Sister Frida. I just uh, have been praying that, uh, that you would put, put her in your hands. And uh, if, if it's your will to call her home now, Lord, if it be so so precious and, and joyful, even though the we would feel the loss loss here. Father, uh, thanks for giving me a safe trip. Uh, it's been a, a, a truly a different experience for me here today in, in, in some respects. But Lord, may we leave here today being being encouraged that the comforter is with us, that we may be bold, that we would stand up for God's word. No, no matter what the world might be saying and what the world might be doing. Uh, Lord, this young man, Matthew, here and his uh, good family that he's uh, with, Lord, we just pray for him as you would guide him in his uh, uh, studies. And, uh, uh, Lord, uh, things just seem to be uh, uh, changing and evolving so much because you are allowing uh, uh, man and, and, and the capability that we have with our uh, cognitive minds to know how our, our how you made our bodies and lord it just seems like a, a man can almost do anything now for us but if we should remember that it's, it all comes from from you so lord in this beautiful day that we have we think of those who are not here who, who are not here be, uh, can't be here because of health and and just not being able to get out and around may, lord may we encourage those people just by a phone call by by a card Lord, I just pray your blessings upon this church. What a blessing it has been for me as I came here uh, early this morning and uh, uh, not knowing what to expect and uh, uh, what a joy it's, it's been for, for me to experience the love that we prayed for also, the love and the communion that we can have together in and through Christ and, and, and the Holy Spirit. And Lord, we uh, appreciate so much that you taught us a prayer that should guide our model prayers by saying our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we, before Sonny uh, gives us a uh, musical selection or offertory, if you're like me, and maybe not, I tend to close my eyes whenever I want to concentrate, especially whenever it comes to music. I challenge you to concentrate on the music, ask God's blessing, on our offerings today as, as, as she plays for us. Sonny? Shall we stand if you 
Ken for the doxology. We thank you for this offering that you've given, that's been given to you this day. We are giving it to you to bless that offering. Lord, may it accomplish your task, especially the spreading of the gospel, bringing people together far and wide around this great earth that you have put mankind on. Father, uh, Father we know that there are forces, as the Bible tells us, in the, in the skies that are against and fighting against what you would want your good news to be proclaimed. So, Father, we just pray that we as your people, we as your Christians would be bold, that we would be bold in our giving, asking your blessings upon that to be bold in action to accomplish uh, it, uh, whatever it might be, putting out your, your word, giving information to people so that other people can come to a saving knowledge and a loving knowledge of, of you while we yet have time. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing about We Have a Story to Tell to the Nations. That's our job that we can do in church. Hymn number 296, We Have a Story to Tell to the Nations. <laughs> The first and last verse. First and last verse. We have a story to tell to the nations that shall turn their hearts to the right. A story of truth and I would just like to convey my personal words of, of saying by may God's blessings be upon you. Thank you for this opportunity, which you didn't know you were going to have me. <laughs> Maybe we might see again. We might not meet each other again, but it's, it's been a privilege. May God continue to bless everyone that's uh, coming to church here, and may the gospel go forward. Now with some scriptures to leave with a charge in Ephesians. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church and the Holy Spirit through all, throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. And, and then as we depart, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the saints be with you all. Amen. You're dismissed.